Do you press the play button and immediately or somewhere down the line, something in FL Studio changes that you would prefer didn't? As if a ghost went and changed a knob or your BPM just to drive you nuts. Well, today you'll learn the two most common reasons that this generally happens. The two reasons this might happen is either initial values or events or pattern automation. So please smash that like button, subscribe, and let's get started. So first thing we're gonna start with is what's called initial values. I want you to see I have 118 for my BPM. I'm gonna click play. All of a sudden, now I have 140. Something to note about this is that if I'm in my pattern, it will not change. But every time that I am on the playlist or song, it will change immediately. I also have a change going on with our volume here. So how do we fix this? Well, whatever is causing you the issue, we're going to right click. You're going to have two things. They don't necessarily look like they belong together. Originally, you're going to see in it song with this position. And a lot of people know or think, I want my BPM to be 118. I'm going to right click in it song with this position. And now every time I play, it's going to stay in the, song, the same spot. But in it actually stands for initial. So we have this delete initial value option here. So now if you look, we have in it song with this position and it is no longer check marked like it was before we click the delete initial value. So if every time you click play, something's changing on you, that's what you're going to look for. Now, this can be great if you have automation drawn in later in the song playlist. Something like having it disconnected and over here, and then it would leave off here, and when your song starts again, that's where the automation would be, is up here. And so you would take your song and have it whatever you wanted it to start at and set that as the initial value. However, it's not very often that that's going to be the case. And it's generally easier to just take something like this level right here and just stick that at the beginning and then you basically created an initial value yourself. Second thing that people are generally gonna have some issues with is events or recorded automation to a specific pattern or a specific channel. And so I'm just gonna create this real quick. And boom, we now have the little ghost that changes everybody's stuff. Generally, if I double click it, I want you to see it opened here, but if you have piano or anything, that's not gonna happen. Generally, it's going to be something like this hiding from somebody and they're going to have, you know, just a four bar loop of some MIDI. We're just going to pretend like that's four bars. It's not. And then you're going to have this little bit of information hiding off in the back and you're going to go, what is happening? And now if we double click, I want you to notice it opened this. It did not open the automation it opened earlier to get to that information you're going to have to click this drop down and you're going to have to go to pattern controls and click here. And now we have this information. You can't right click to delete it. That just draws more. You have to go up here, click our little delete option and highlight it to remove it. Now, something that is going to happen sometimes is this stuff's going to get recorded, not by you, but by plugins or other things that are running in your session whenever you record and put down new MIDI chords and things like that. How you can stop this from happening is if we right click our recording option up here, we have a section for automation and we can turn off automation and then it won't record any. However, whenever you do record automation, whatever pattern you're on, and whatever channel you're generally affecting is where that automation is going to be recorded. Also to get to the events page, if we want to, we can also right click and go edit events, in which case we'll see any info or drawn in automation here. 
And those are the two most common reasons why something changes on you somewhere along the line or as soon as you click that play button. So in summary, ghost automation and things changing on you is generally due to initial values or automation that is recorded to events. To get to events, you just go to the pattern it's recorded to, you go to the very bottom left, you click your drop down, and then you go to the automation in question, which is usually last in the list. Or if we know what's being changed, instead of going into the piano roll and having to go to the last thing in the list, we right click the knob or parameter that's being changed. And in the top of that drop down list is an edit events option, which will open up the events or AKA your automation. And if you want to avoid accidentally recording this event automation, then just right click the record button and turn automation off. If you liked this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. This is Warren with Scale Audio and adios. Mm -hmm.